Hello and welcome to a new series. In this series, we are going to talk about the C language. Uh, the audience for this series or the targeted audience is Python programmers. So if you have a background in Python, this will be um, a good series for you. So we are going to start with this basic program where we have a program that prints hello world, as you can see from the output below here. The first element you see in this program is what we call a multi-line comment. So this is basically a comment that can go over multiple lines. You start this with the slash and a star, and you end with a star and a slash. And between these star slash, you can basically write anything in multiple lines. So if I want to add more lines, I just hit enter and write more. This is the first element. The second element is this one line comment where you start with double slash, then you write whatever you want to write. However, this is only one line comment. So if I want to go to the next line, you cannot write immediately. You have to write double star again, then basically write the content of the, com of the comment. Okay, this is about comment in C. Let's see the next element. Here we have this include statement. And this is somewhat similar to the import statement in Python. There are some differences. We will go over it later. Uh, however, you can think about this as similar to the import statement in Python. Here we are including stdio.h. What we have here is called a header file. Okay, basically every library, remember libraries from Python, this is basically some piece of code someone else or the programmer himself has written and you can reuse it in your, in your other programs. And every library has a header file. Okay, so basically here you will import the standard input output header file. This is what stdio is short for. And we are importing this header file because we are using the printf function. So why do we need to include this? Because we are using printf. Okay. Also, whatever start with a hash sign, like the include statement here, is called pre-processor directive. We will go over what is the meaning of preprocessor directive later. But this statement here include hash include something is called preprocessor directive. Okay, the next element of this program is the main function. Now, if you want to execute a C program or any executable C program basically has to have a main function. The main function is just like in Python where your program will start. However, in Python we said the main function is just a convention. So you, you just basically write a main function to indicate that the program will start from here. In C, however, the compiler or the system that will run your program will look for a main function to start to start the execution. So you have to have a main, a main function. It's just, it's not just uh, by convention. Okay. So what we have in this main function is the following. Let's see. The first thing you might notice is this curly brackets here. Now the curly brackets is a replacement for indentation. Remember in Python, when you write a function, you have to basically write everything indented below the function to indicate that this part belongs to the function. In C, indentation is meaningless. And instead of indentation, you will use curly brackets. So whatever between the opening and closing curly brackets is part of the main function here. Okay. 
so basically indentation is meaningless if I write this this is still correct and the program will still run correctly the most important thing here is to keep everything between these two curly brackets we just add indentation for style purposes okay next we have these two statements so the main function has two statements notice how each statement ends with a semicolon so this is um part of the syntax of the C language. Each statement has to have a semicolon at the end. What else can we see from this program? You have return zero here. Okay. Um, zero is an integer, right? Where do we see integer in this program? You see it down here before the main word. Okay. Basically, here we are saying that the main function at the end will return something of type integer. And we will go back, um, we will come back again to discuss the, basically, the syntax of functions in C in a later video. But here, why do we have end before main? Just we are saying basically at the end, the main function will return zero. What is the meaning of zero here? You can read about it. Um, later. Okay. So notice also one difference between uh, C and Python. And instead of print in Python, you have print F. Okay. And you write whatever you want to print in, in a string with double code. By the way, um, double code are not replaceable with single code in C. So you cannot write string in single code. All right. So before moving to another program, I just would like to write another print statement. I will print, for example, welcome. And the semicolon, then I will hit run. And you will see that we have both basically output in the same, same line. So one important thing to notice here is that printf, unlike print in Python, does not add a new line after the output. So if you would like to have each output in a separate line, you have to manually add backslash n at the end of the first one. So when you run this now, you get both in separate lines. Okay. So let's write another program. This time, I'm interested in a program that takes basically the number of miles and converts it to kilometers. Okay. Now, the formula for this is kilometers is 1.609 times the number of miles. If you think about this problem, you need two variables. You need the variables to to have the number of miles and you have a variables to write the result, the number of kilometers. Now, if we are in Python, you will simply write miles equal to some number, like two, for example. And this, since this is a statement, you need to end it with a semicolon. However, in C, there is one extra step you need to do whenever you create a variable. You need to declare the variable. You need to declare the variable. Basically, the meaning of declaration is you tell C what is the data type you are going to store in this variable, or what is the data type you are going to use this variable with. So here we are going to store real numbers in, in miles and in kilometers. So numbers with, with decimal. In Python, we said this is a float, right? Also, there is a float data type in C. There is a similar data type also called double. So double and float are both used for real number. Let's use double in this example. So I will declare the variable miles as um, a double variable. So a variable that will store real numbers. So I will write double the data type, then I will write the variable name miles. 
than a semicolon. So this part here, or this statement is called declaration. This is declaration. And the second statement here is called the initialization step. Okay. So previously in Python, you just write initialization. Here you have declaration and initialization. Also, I need another variable for kilometers. I can write it like this. And the value of this variable will come from the formula we have on the right. So kilometers equal to 1.609 multiplied by the basically number of miles. Semicolon. Next, I would like to print the result. So I'll simply write print f. And here in C, you cannot simply multiply a variable like this. You have to have a formatted string. So we will write f. Then basically kilometers. And one important difference here in formatted uh, string is we don't write the percentage sign here. No, instead you write just a comma. And one other thing is for double variables, we will use LF instead of F as a placeholder. Now LF is short for long float. Okay. Okay. So when I run this now, you see that I have my result, which is the number of kilometers, uh, which is converted from two miles. Now, one thing here is, you might notice this is what we uh, call a constant. Okay, this is something that will not change in the formula. So what we want to do is we want to define a constant for this number instead of using the number itself. The way to do this in C is to use a preprocessor directive. So we will come before the main function, we will write hash, then define, then we will basically write the name of the constant. The convention is the same as, as in Python. So you will use basically all cabs to, to write the constant names. I will call it kilometers per miles. Then a space, then you will write the value of this constant, 1.609. So now I can use this constant instead of the of the number. Run the program, you get the same output. Again, why did we add this line? This is just to define a constant, and I will use this constant in the program instead of the number. Again, both of these lines are called preprocessor directives. Okay. One uh, thing I want to modify here is instead of setting the variable miles to number two, I would like to read it from the user. So instead of this line, I would like to read miles from the user. Now, how do I do this? There is a function called scan f. This is basically responsible for reading from the user. This is like the input function in, in Python. So scanf is a function that takes two arguments. The first one is a placeholder. You write it inside a string between quotation. You write percentage sign, then lf. Why lf? Because I am reading a double variable. I am reading a variable or a real number that I'm going to store in a double variable. Then a second argument will be where do you want to store the value that you will read? So I'm going to store this in the variable miles, right? However, the scanf function does not take the variable itself. It will take the address of that variable. Again, the scanf function does not want the variable. It wants the address of the variable. Basically, you can think about it as this. Scanf needs to know where should I store 
the value from the user. So where should you store it? You should store, you should give the function the address of where to store that, that input. So how do I get the address of a variable? You will write ampersand before the variable. Now ampersand here will give you the address of that, of that variable. Now, when I run this, notice that I have a blinking cursor here basically waiting for me to add input. So I will write two, hit enter, and I will have my output. You might ask, how can I add a prompt? How can I basically prompt the user to write uh, to input something? You cannot do this with the scan f function. You have to have a print f before the scan f. So here basically you write please enter the number of miles. And I will add backslash n to have a new line. So when you run this now, you get the prompt, you add your input, and you get your output. Okay. By the way, the scan f function is also in the standard input output header file. The last thing I want to discuss in this video is variable namings. So the rules are similar to Python on how to choose variable names. However, one thing you will hear about um, when naming variables in C is something called standard identifiers. And reserved words. So reserved words are something like f, which you will use for f statement, or int, which is the data type integer. You cannot use these reserved words as variable names in C. So you cannot use these. You will have basically an error. Standard identifiers, on the other hand, are something like printf and scanf. Now, technically you can use these as variable names, but you shouldn't. So it's not recommended to use these as variable names. So what is the difference between reserved word and standard identifiers? You cannot at all use reserved words. However, you can use standard identifiers, but you shouldn't. So, why you shouldn't use standard identifiers as variable names? Because if you, if you use, for example, printf as a variable name and you put five in printf, if you do this, you will not be able to use printf as a function for, for printing. Basically, you redefined the, the, the identifier or the word printf. Okay. So throughout this series, we are going to use this online compiler. You can find the link up here, or basically you can download your own compiler and editor for C, or you can look for any other online compiler for the C language. Okay, that's it for this video, and I will see you in the next one.